He was the ruler or the king of his time marching in the streets of Baghdad, noticing a group of individuals, young men, young children playing on the streets. As soon as he reaches where they were, they disperse except one of them. He stands unfazed, without any consideration for his entourage. He looks at this young man and asks him, why have you not moved? Why have you not followed the other children? The response from the young man is that there is no reason for me to be fearful. Neither have I sinned or performed anything against you, nor have I obstructed you in such any manner at all. At that moment, the ruler known as al Ma'mun al-Abbasi was impressed by the answer, carries on with his journey and movement, finds a falcon who presents him and brings back a small fish in his peaks. And he places it in his hands, walks back to that young man and asks him, what is inside the palms of my hands? That young man asks and answers actually by saying that God the Almighty has created falcons who go to the sea and they collect and they pick small fish and they bring it to the rulers of that time so that they can examine members of the holy household. Ma'mun, of course, was very much impressed with the answer of the young man. He asks him, who are you? He says, Ana Muhammad ibn Ali. He recognizes that the young man was none other than the holy ninth Imam, Imam Muhammad ibn Ali in al-Jawad al-Taqi, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, who indeed inspired many because of the issues surrounding his life. But of course, the demonstration of the superiority of Imam al-Jawad over every other human being alive at that time was made through his knowledge, the extensive knowledge that was presented to people in many cases. When al Ma'mun decided to marry his daughter Umm al-Fadl to Imam al-Jawad, this indeed became something which wasn't acceptable by the Abbasids. They said to al Ma'mun, how could you make an individual, a young man who has reached the age of 10 or 11 thereabouts, marry your daughter? In other words, how would you accept this? al Ma'mun would say that he is from the Ahl al-Bayt, Innahu min ahlu baytin zuqqul alma zaqqa. He is from a family, from the progeny of the Prophet, in which knowledge has immersed within them. In other words, they are deeply rooted in understanding of the faith. You all have heard and come across the famous debate that took place between the Imam salam and the jurist at that time, the Qadi, Yahya ibn Aktham, who the traditions tell us in many books of hadith and literature, they tell us of course that the challenge was made and several hundred scholars were present in the presence of Al Ma'mun and the Imam alayhi salam. And the idea was to present the knowledge of the Imam to those who are doubting. Yahya came forward and he wanted to ask the Imam a simple question. Tell me of an individual who hunts whilst they're in the state of ihram. Imam Ali salam of course responds back by saying, was it during the day or the night? Was it Umrah or Hajj? Did he know or did he not know? Was it the first time or has he done it before? He asks a number of important pertinent questions to ascertain the Islamic jurisprudential answer, which completely amazed and perplexed Yahya, who was not able to answer the jurist at that time, considered one of the most knowledgeable individuals. At that moment, Imam salam was asked by Ma'mun to ask Yahya some questions. And Imam asked him, tell me about the individual who looked at the person, who looked at the lady, and she's haram for him. At noon, in the afternoon, she became halal for him. In the evening, she became haram for him. In the morning, she became haram for him. At lunchtime, she became halal for him. And in the afternoon, she became haram for him. And in the evening, she became halal for him. Yahya said, I have no idea. This all halal and haram has made me go dizzy. I have no idea. Imam alayhi salam was told by Ma'mun, clarify this matter. Imam says that if a man looks at a lady who is a slave girl, indeed this look is haram. Yet later on in the afternoon, he purchases her. She, becomes, she becomes halal. In the evening, he frees her. 
She becomes haram. Later on in the morning, what does he do? He marries her. She becomes halal. In the lunchtime at noon, he performs or practices dhihar. He says to her, you are to me like my mother. She becomes haram. In the afternoon, what does he do? He pays the compensation and he becomes halal to her. Later on in the evening, what does he do? He, of course, says what to her? He says to her, you are divorced once. And in the morning, he takes her back. He practices this revoking of the divorce. Imam Salam highlighted his knowledge there. In another interesting tradition that perhaps many of the mu'mineen have not come across, which I found today in the book Al-Ihtijaj. In this book by Shaykh Al-Tabrasi, Imam السلام, engages in a debate, in another debate with Yahya ibn Aktham. And the Imam السلام, says to, or Yahya ibn Aktham says to the Imam, he says to him, tell me, that what have you come across the tradition when it comes to the position of the first and the second Khalifa, which says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Jibra'il to whom? To the Holy Prophet and says, As-salamu yuqri'uka as salam that Allah sends his peace and blessings be upon you and asks you to go and ask the first Khalifa, Abu Bakr, are you pleased with me or not? What do you think about that? Imam alayhi salam responds back by saying, you see, this is the methodology and this is the way of dialogue that the Imam alayhi salam would engage with people from other schools of thought. Imam says to this individual, he doesn't say to him, you're talking nonsense. Of course, he begins the discussion by saying to him, he says to him, be aware that in Hajjatul Wada, the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his holy progeny, indeed made sure that people understood that after him there will come individuals who will fabricate hadith that will place hadith which has no basis remember that rasulullah has said whomsoever does so let them anticipate their position in jahannam let them understand that their position in Jahannam is reserved for them. There is a special seat in, in Jahannam for them. Those individuals who have taken part in wad of hadith. What do you find the Imam says to him? Imam says to him, have you not read the Quran? That Allah is closer to the human being than the jugular vein. And doesn't the Quran say, وَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَحُولُ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَقَلْبِهِ That Allah lies between the human being and his own heart. How is it possible that Allah seeks and goes to the Prophet to go and ask the first Khalifa about how he feels about the Almighty? Whereas the Almighty knows before him, the individual then asks him, he says to him, how about the tradition that says, Mathalu, the first Khalifa and the second Khalifa fil ard ka Jibra'il wa Mika'il fil sama. That the example of the first two is what? to uh, similitude to Mikael and Jibra'il in the heavens. Imam alayhi salam says Mikael and Jibra'il are angels of Allah that did never perform any form of shirk, nor did they commit any disobedience. You cannot compare individuals who bow down to idols to angels of God who are pure. Amazing. This is the rationality and the methodology of the Imam salam. The man then says to him, but tell me one thing, we have a hadith which says that Abu Bakr, Sayyid Kuhuli Ahl al Jannah, that the first Khalifa is the master of those who are elderly in paradise. You see, the problem we have, of course, at the time of Muawiyah, he used to pay thousands to people like Samar ibn Jundab and others to fabricate hadith when they came across the tradition that states Ana Madinatul Ilm wa Aliyun Babuha I am the city of knowledge and Ali since gate they came forward with what? and so on and this individual is its window that person is the back door and so on here they have the similar example Imam Ali Salam says Bal wada'aha Banu Umayyah this is a hadith that is fabricated by Banu Umayyah why? Imam himself says he says, لِأَنَّ الْحَدِيثِ هُوَ what? The hadith is, Al-Hasan wal-Hussein, Sayyida Shababi Ahlul Jannah. 
that Al Hassan and Hussein are the master to the use of paradise. This is a hadith that is fabricated. Then the Imam does not leave it there. And he says, Fa'lam, know that every human being who enters Jannah shall enter as a youth. There will be no elderly on the day of judgment in Jannah. Which means this hadith has no basis.